matchup with Emerson Fittipaldi with the new Chevy B engine. Gary Bettenhausen has a Buick and a car into the wall. A teammate of Gary Bettenhausen's, another one of the Buicks out of the Menard stable. It's that's Tom Stevens' car. Yeah. Former winner of the race and the front end heavily damaged there. Steve, of course, living out in the Phoenix area, developing golf courses and a new complex of baseball fields. Steven was trying to get out on his own. You saw him disconnect the steering wheel and pull it off. The front end of that car damaged so badly, he could have some tanglement around his feet. Paul Reed, he couldn't get out right away. The fire that they had on the left was a small, like oil type fire that wasn't going to go anywhere. But the big problem is going to be around his feet. Tom Steva has crashed in five of his last seven Indy 500 starts. Yeah, incredibly, he has not finished at all since he won this race in 1983. And, of course, he continues that streak now. And you notice how the field, see, there's this debris all over the racetrack, and the field had to really come down. Look how close they are to the pit entrance. Single file. <laughs> A lot of them, I'm sure, said, oh, why don't you just let us go down through the pits? Let's look at this situation as it developed with Tom Steva. As we're under our second caution of the day, you can't help but think how close on the racetrack this happened to where Nelson Piquet also crashed. Look Watch at the this. upper part of the screen. That is a crash almost identical to Piquet's, Paul, Bobby. Very, he, very close. Lost it at the apex. He just flat lost it. It was just the rear end came loose. I don't think anything broke on the car. It was just simple matter. Another angle, same situation. That's right, Paul. It's the most likely place that a guy loses it. It's the very sharpest to the right down the apex of the turn. Another look at the same accident from down right on top of the wall. Watch the yellow car. There it is. He did not hit directly head on, which is encouraging there. Uh, not as severe an impact as Piquet's was. The speed was lower and the angle was better. Let's have high hopes for Tom Sneva. So Tom Sneva loses control in the fourth turn, catches the wall on the outside, bringing on the second yellow light of the day. We'll return with more action from the Indy 500 after this message and a word from your ABC stations. Just moments ago, they removed Tom Sneva from his damaged car, and look at that. Tom Sneva waves to the crowd, and you can bet they cheered back. So a precautionary ride to the hospital, but the first report is that Tom Sneva's in good shape. Another angle of this accident. Sneva is one of 10 former winners in the race, and some of those men, including Sneva, have not had much experience lately. And Bobby, your brother Al told me, you know, when you haven't been driving a lot, what uh, leaves you is your ability to handle the traffic. Whether that was part of the cause of this accident, he was following other cars closely, and there must have been a lot of turbulence taking air off that front wing. Well, you can just see that the cars have so much adhesion, and then all of a sudden they just bust loose. Let's go down to the pits. Jack of Roots with Roberto Guerrero. Well, Paul, this is the first moment that Kenny Bernstein, the owner, had with Roberto Guerrero. He had just finally made his way back to the garage area. They've exchanged information. Roberto, share with us what happened out there. Well, I, I, keep, I keep hoping this is a dream or a nightmare, and I, I, I don't know if it is. You know, it, it was uh, uh, obviously with the cold weather, I was trying to warm the rear tires up, and uh, I gave it a little bit too much, and it just swapped into me. It's, uh, it seemed like the, the picture-perfect month w w that we had is the only, the only mistake I made the whole, the whole time, a tiny little mistake, and unfortunately, it cost us the race. I mean, I, I feel so bad for the whole Quaker State people, the Buick people, the, the whole King Motorsports team. You know, everybody worked so hard, and, you know, being on the pole, and we didn't even get to take the, the green flag, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a tough one. I don't really know. What was the emotional feeling, though, when it happened, when that car snapped around? What was the feeling in the gut? Well, at that time, I was still hoping it was a nightmare and I was going to wake up, and that, that's all. I mean, obviously, very disappointed, but Roberto Guerrero will, will bounce back again. Time and time again, he does, Paul Page. He's had his downs, but he's had his ups as well. Back to you. Roberto has not finished an Indy 500 since he ran second in 1987. On uh, Tom Stevens' situation, here's Jerry Punch. Dr. Henry Bach just walked out of the care center, and Hank, uh, what's the status on Tom Stevens? 
He's on his way to Methodist Hospital. He has contusions to his left chest, his left hip, and both of his feet. However, he is awake and alert. That's good news. Tom Sneva, heavy impact with the wall, not nearly as bad as what we saw with Nelson Piquet early in the month. Paul? 